Hi, we're going to talk about what is mathematical modeling and specifically using differential equations to do mathematical modeling. All right, so I want to first of all talk about kind of the overall structure, what is the main idea of doing mathematical modeling, and then we'll talk about some good practices that you should keep in mind as you do this. So first of all, you're always going to be starting with some sort of imprecise knowledge of a situation. If you had completely precise knowledge of the situation, you would not need a mathematical model to help you describe what's going on with that situation. So inherent to all of this is this idea that your knowledge at the outset is imprecise. When you think about describing the spread of a disease or this, the growth of a population, there are all kinds of things that might not be things that you would know to start with. For example, exactly how many people had the disease at the very beginning. That's a difficult thing to know. So you start with some sort of imprecise knowledge of the situation, and then basically you want to represent that as a mathematical configuration. And mathematics inherently has a precise formulation to it. Part of the reason that you might represent this situation as a mathematical formulation, though, is that mathematics provides a lot of tools, whether that's data analysis tools that you might use from statistics, calculus tools, all kinds of different tools that you can then use to analyze the situation. So you might analyze data, you might do some descriptive statistics, and you might do some predictions from that. But all of this is in the realm of mathematics. So we have an average, we have a greater than or a less than, we have an equation that can perhaps predict what's going to happen in the future, but this is all in terms of mathematics. Then the other part of that is that you now need to translate that back to the situation. And so when you translate that back to the situation, that perhaps gives you some sort of practical solution. Maybe some sort of guidelines or legislation or plan. That come as a result of that mathematical analysis that you've done. And then an important part of that, which sometimes I think that in practice people forget to do, is it's important to check whether that makes sense with your initial knowledge of the situation. So that make sure your plan actually makes sense in terms of the situation, remembering that your initial knowledge is generally going to be imprecise. Otherwise, you wouldn't need to be creating a mathematical model to start with. And so you might need to check that with the situation. Perhaps more data has come in. Perhaps you need to repeat this process over and over again until you get more and more precise descriptions of the situation, better and better practical solutions. So this is the key idea. When we do this for this class, we're going to be using differential equations to create these mathematical formulations. So our mathematical formulations will be based on derivatives, which are inherent in differential equations. So we're going to have something about rates of change that are known in our situation. All right, some other things that we want to talk about here are some good practices to keep in mind when you do mathematical modeling. So we will try to uh, model all of these steps when we do mathematical modeling in this class. So we're going to start with making sure that we clearly state our assumptions. Clearly state our assumptions. 
So that might mean things like, I'm going to assume that my data is correct that I'm starting with. But you need to clearly state what those assumptions are and state that at the beginning and at the outset of creating this mathematical model. The next important thing that you want to do is you want to completely describe your variables and parameters. So when we do this with differential equations, we're really going to have two important variables. Um, if you look at systems of differential equations or partial differential equations, perhaps you'll have more. But we're generally going to have an independent variable. So in terms of a function, that would be your input variable. That often is time. That's something that's going to vary independently of anything else. Time is going to move forward no matter what uh, number of diseases, number of infections we have, or something like that. And then a dependent variable. When you look at more complicated differential equations, perhaps you have more than one independent variable and more than one dependent variable, but we're going to start with just one of each. And then parameters. Parameters, in general, are constants. Sometimes those constants are known precisely, and sometimes those constants are not known precisely. And perhaps they can take on different values in different models. So sometimes parameters are represented by numbers. Sometimes they're represented by letters, if it's an unknown constant. But these are, in general, constants. But they might be constants that can take on different values in different mathematical models. All right. Uh, the next thing that you want to do is make sure that you write appropriate equations. For differential equations, we will do that. When we do this, uh, one of the things that we will focus on is using the simplest models possible that actually give good results. So you can write an equation that takes into account all sorts of different variables and parameters, but then can be very difficult to analyze that, to do, actually do the math to analyze that. So you want to use as simple of an equation as possible that actually gives good results, that when you check that back with your knowledge of the situation and maybe further knowledge that you've gained since then of the situation, it seems to be giving reliable results. So you want to use as simple of an equation model as possible, but you still want to make sure that you're getting reasonable results from that. Um, you want to make sure that you analyze the equations. And we will really use a three-prong approach to analyzing our differential equations in terms of models. And these are not separate from each other necessarily. We will often be using all three and sort of in conjunction with each other, sort of feeding back into each other. So you want to look at doing that analytically. That might mean finding a solution to a differential equation, either by hand or letting a computer find an actual solution to a differential equation. Qualitatively, qualitatively means we're going to be describing the qualities of our equations and our solutions. So we might be able to describe something as increasing rapidly, increasing slowly, slowing the rate of increase, things like that. So these are more descriptive sorts of ways that we might analyze our equations. And then numerically. We will rely a lot on numerical approximation techniques to get numerical approximations, even if we can't necessarily solve a differential equation. So we will use these three all in conjunction with each other. And those also are a good way to make sure that you're making sense of the problem, so that the numerical results you get actually connect back to your knowledge of the original situation that you were trying to describe. All right, and then the other important thing that I really want to stress is that you should always make sure 
that you want to check your solutions back with the original situation to make sure they make sense. And if your results don't make sense, or perhaps you used too simple of a model and left out some important characteristics, then perhaps you do this whole process again. So maybe you revise the model, revise your assumptions and your descriptions, and create a new model. So often this is an iterative process where you start with a simple model, work on that, see what that tells you, and then use that to refine what you're doing. All right, in the next video, we'll look at a couple of very straightforward, easy examples, and then really throughout the course, we're gonna be looking at a whole lot more of these really in every chapter that we work on in this course.